We talked about resistivity last week, but today let's look at the connection between resistivity, resistance, and the size of the sample. Resistance arises from interactions or collisions between the charge carriers and the um, ion, lattice ions. So it makes sense that the longer the sample is, the more of those collisions will happen, and therefore the more energy will be converted into thermal energy in the sample. If you increase the cross-sectional area, you're decreasing the current density, which means that there's less interaction between the charge carriers and the sample. When, resi when resistors are connected in series, then the equivalent resistance is simply the sum. Uh, this is the opposite of what it was for capacitors. In capacitors, uh, it was the parallel combination where the capacitance added up. And this is because of the difference between way current flows in a resistor and doesn't flow in a capacitor. In a parallel set of resistors, the equivalent resistance follows this reciprocal rule. And this was the similar rule to what series sets of capacitors do. Remember that when you're using either of the reciprocal rules for parallel resistors or series capacitors, the equivalent is going to be less than the smallest member of the set. So finding equivalent resistance is very similar to what we did to do equivalent capacitance. We're just using the rules backwards. Um, what we do is we start typically farthest away from the source or the battery and we start reducing in parallel and series combinations. So what would you do to find the equivalent resistance of this circuit? The 20 and the 30 ohm are in parallel, so I could cut those away and put back a 12. When I do that, that new 12 ohm resistor will be in series with the 10, so I can cut them both away and replace them with a 22. This means that I can calculate the total current coming from the battery, and then I could actually go back and work my way up through the series of reductions to get to the current and voltage of each element. Uh, for example, the 410 milliamp current is flowing in both the 10 ohm and the 12 ohm replacement resistor, so I could use that to calculate the delta V's across each of them. Delta V equals IR. The 12 ohm resistor is a parallel combination of the 20 and the 30 ohm, so I could take that potential difference across the 12 and say that it was the same across the 20 and the 30 ohm resistors, and then I could use that to calculate the um, current in each of them. And at all points, I would be following along with the uh, Kirchhoff loop rule and the Kirchhoff junction rule, making sure to check my work so that the sum of the voltages around any closed loop is zero, and the sum of the currents flowing into any junction is equal to the sum of the currents flowing out. As we talked about before, res resistors transform electrical potential energy of the system into thermal energy by really just inelastic collisions with the lattice ions. So how do we calculate the rate at which this energy is converted or transformed? It's, it's fairly simple. We look at what current is. Current is charge flow per unit time, coulombs per second. A potential difference or voltage is electrical potential energy per unit charge. So if I take the product of those two quantities, I would have energy per unit time, power. That can be used along with the delta V equals IR to make these other two relationships.